In this example, we'll use partial fraction decomposition to integrate this function, x over x squared plus x minus two. So the first step is to do the algebra of decomposing this into partial fractions. And once we do, we can integrate each of those fractions. So the actual integration step will be at the very end of the problem and it will be relatively quick. Most of the problem is figuring out how to decompose x over x squared plus x minus two into partial fractions. We'll follow the process that we've outlined already. There are those three steps. First, we will factor the denominator completely. In this case, there's nothing in common to factor out of x squared plus x minus two. So we can simply break it down into two linear factors where the two values that are missing should add up to positive one and multiply to negative two. So with a little bit of thought, you should figure out that that's x plus two and x minus one. Once we have that factored, the next step is to write down the form of the partial fraction. Since there's no repeated terms, this is as simple as it gets. X plus two gets its own partial fraction and X minus one gets its own partial fraction. One for each factor in that denominator. Now the last step is just to solve for A and B. And we always start by clearing out fractions. As we solve this right here, we want to multiply both sides by this common denominator so that we won't have any fractions to deal with as we solve. When we do that, the left hand side is just left with its numerator x. On the right hand side, the first term has an x plus two in the denominator, which will cancel just leaving the x minus one behind. Remember, we're multiplying by this product of those two factors. And then on the second term, the x minus ones will cancel, just leaving b times x plus two. Now is where we have a choice of two approaches to solve for a and b. And you can choose whichever you prefer. If you like to expand things out and equate the powers of x, go ahead and do that. I personally prefer to plug in test values. And again, by choosing them carefully, we can simplify our algebra as much as possible. Notice that the factors we have are x minus one and x plus two. So if we choose positive one and negative two for our x values, that will make the algebra as simple as possible. When we plug in x equals one, on the left side, we get one. On the right side, the a term drops off because x minus one is zero, and the b term is b times three. So one equals b times three, we can solve with one step by dividing by three and get b equals one third. Similarly, when x equals negative two, the left hand side will be negative two this time. On the right hand side, we'll have a times negative two minus one or negative three plus b times zero, so that disappears. And again, we can divide both sides by negative three to solve and find that a is two thirds. So however you choose to do it, whether you do it this way or by equating the powers of x, we've found now that x over x squared plus x minus two can be decomposed into a is now two thirds over x plus two plus b, that's one third over x minus one. Since this complicated looking rational function can be decomposed this way, if we wanna integrate this function, we can do so by integrating these partial fractions. And so we just need to do a quick u substitution on each one, and these are pretty easy. I won't take the time to go through the u substitution, but for the first term, for instance, you would let u equal x plus two. For the second term, you would let u equal x minus one. Each of them would just be a constant divided by u, which would turn into the natural log function. So the first term, for instance, would be two thirds times the natural log of u. And since u is x plus two there, we get two thirds times the natural log of x plus two. Don't forget the absolute value signs. We talked about those when we covered u substitution earlier in the semester. And then the second term would become one third natural log of x minus one, plus c of course. So 
So there's our final answer. And the majority of the problem was the partial fraction decomposition, breaking this rational function down into simpler ones. The integration happened in one step at the very end. Most of the problem is just algebra. So it's not really a new method of integration per se, it's just a new algebraic technique that we can use to simplify something to the point where we can integrate it relatively easily.